Welcome back to another video. This is the one you've been requesting and I'm sorry it's taken so long. I've kind of been neglecting making it because I just know it's going to be painful. But I've decided, let's just do it. I'm going to talk to you as if you're here with me. So it's going to be an off the cuff, just looking at my screen, going through it bit by bit. I'll probably be having some beers while doing it and we'll try and do it in one take. But here it is. You've requested it. The editing breakdown of Camp Scoville. Let's go! I, I so regret not having a script, but here we go. Hmm. First things first, I want to put the elephant in the room out there. I did not create those fire effects, okay? I had a client budget, I had a time I was trying to stick to, and I purchased a fire pack. So for all the comments about how did you animate the fire, I didn't. Sorry, I'm not that guy. I'm not a animator by trade I'm just having a bit of fun and I had a time scale to try and stick to and a budget and I thought I saw this pack for 40 quid it nailed the brief perfectly with what I wanted to do for the transitions between the jars and it helped me out massively with the fire it comes with the smoke it even had that skull shape effect in it for the reaper trails so for me it was perfect I'll put a link in the description for um, where I got it from. But like I say, it was like 40 quid, like some sort of monster effects pack. Brilliant purchase because I have saved myself hours, if not days, trying to work out how to create those fire effects. And I'm not saying go and buy this pack and use, uh, use the effects in all your future films. I'm just saying it was right for my client and this project. The 2D flat graphic look was what I was after. And this pack helped enormously. So for all the questions or people that were here just about the fire, I'm sorry. This is literally a click and drag and put it on, scale it to the size you want, you're done. It's very simple, very fun, very effective and a massive time saver. But for the others that are here for kind of the, uh, the James Kelly animation style, which is just very simple Photoshop stuff, stick around, here we go. Let me show you how we created our animation. Okay, so I was lucky enough to get given the flat artwork from the client. Because it's a client job, they wanted obviously to give me any assets that were available to help make this as smooth as possible. So by having this illustrator artwork, we have vector graphics, which mean we have infinite resolution to play with here. Uh, vector is as you can see, you can go as zoomed in as you want and there's no pixelation. That is the benefit of artwork that's supplied in Illustrator. We can't obviously animate from that because it's not on a cylinder. That was the issue that I was facing because how are we gonna go from this jar being part of the film where I'm picking it up and interacting with it to being animated? We can't just do like a massive zoom in like I did before on my uh, my beer advert with the um, the chief Indian beer advert. That one I cheated because I zoomed in so close into the can I was able to move the camera around on a cylinder photo and nobody would have known that it was um, yeah I'm not sure what I'm saying. This is gonna happen a lot so I'm sorry where I um, I don't talk sense <laughs> so I'm sorry. I regret not having a script but the beer isn't helping either. But this video is painful and I just want to get it done for you. Uh, much better things lined up. Stick around, please. <laughs> uh, in the coming weeks, there'll be much better videos than this one. This is only because you've asked for it, just so you know. First of all, we took photographs of the jars. I say we, I. <laughs> so this is the photograph. As you can see, 
Each of the jars needed quite a bit of heavy retouching. You've got things such as the sticker, kind of crease lines that come a lot of the time with sticky labels. We've also got lots of dusty bits uh, and it needed tidying up and then cutting out. And the reason we're cutting it out is because we're putting it on our own background because we want to animate it on this background you're seeing now, but we want it to come from, from nothing basically, from behind that bit of wood. Let's just show you the background quickly. The background is just a photograph. Again, I had shot the jars, I kept the lens in the same focus as if there was a jar right here in the middle. And we took this photo, but as you can see, there is all these disgusting crease marks in the background and a few dust spots. Don't want any of that. So what we do is we blur it. And by blurring it, we're able to get a nice smooth gradient transition, which hides all the dirty bits and the creases. And then we also got a nice bit of wood texture, put that over the top, added some lighting effects and boom, that is our background. Merge those into two layers, your background blur layer and your wood front layer. And then they're on two layers because the wood front layer is always gonna be on top of anything we're animating to do with the jars because that is our front focus part. The jars sit behind that. The background sits behind the jars. So with the jar now cut out, I had to obviously start getting rid of elements that we didn't want because because we're animating this fire, we obviously had to make that green and blend in with the jar. So I did my best to clone the texture from above and below to blend it in as if there is no fire. We then pasted our illustrator item from the um, supplied artwork and we distorted it and warped it as best as we could to match a cylinder shape, which is also tapering at the top. Very hard to do. As you can see, I couldn't quite get it exactly lined up. You can see on the shoe here, a bit of overlap from the original label and his hat has got a bit of mess there. So we've had to do a retouch layer where we again clone the green from near that area and we make it all nice and smooth. See the shoe with the retouch on, with the retouch off, it's dirty, clean, dirty, clean. The problem is it still looks like it's a, a separate item slapped on a jar easy win here you see that highlight layer going down well it's not a layer but the highlight line if we can try and imitate that and apply it just to our scout boy scout layer we can blend it in a lot more effectively so something as simple as doing that allows us to make this ultra high res artwork look like it's a bit more part of the jar then we need to think about the animated elements so we then paste from Illustrator the fire element. And that will allow us to do all our things. We're hoping to like squish it, expand it, make it do its sonic boom thing. But we do that inside of After Effects. Next, we do my classic, you've seen it by now, blinking technique. I mean, I first started doing this on my Christmas advert. Christmas is coming soon. I'll probably put that one up again because that was so cute. Uh, all we do is a layer with his eyes closed. Again, we just color match the skin color and we paint over his eyes. And then when you turn that layer on and off in After Effects, it looks like he's blinking. You know, we don't have to do any fancy keyframes in between of his eyelids closing because it's this jerky cartoon style, which only requires one frame on, one frame off. Also, we want his tongue to wiggle. So when the fire comes out, it's always like, Oh, that's hot. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So by doing that, what I've done is clone the tongue and shrunk it down below his mouth. So it starts there, gets smaller, gets smaller, and it's gone. And then when you reverse it, and then you go back and forth between that, it's like, ah, that's hot. And that's how I do my animation. It's so simple, isn't it? Should I show you some more from the other ones? So again, we've got our original photo, lots of scratch marks. Lots of things to tidy up. Let's hide all these layers. So there we go. That is the photograph. Then we put on the vector elements. Now this one was really quite hard to warp. So I did it in two stages because it was such a wide one. Uh, I did the right hand side first, which is this gravestone and spiderweb 
signpost. And then we also did the Reaper as a secondary layer. But again, they look ultra unrealistic compared to the jar. There's no highlight. So again, we've added a highlight to that right area. And that one blends in really nicely. But then we also need to do a highlight on that right hand side. Just a sliver that's still on there on the Reaper. And then now the whole Reaper looks pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Again, all we have to do for animating, simple color match. Again, eyes closed and eyes open. Ding, ding, ding. It's so easy. When you break it down like this, isn't it just easy? And you're probably looking at anything you've got packaging wise now going, oh, I could make that blink. Yes, you could. It's fun, isn't it? Also on that one, we have the the chili. Now that's just the Illustrator file brought in as a separate layer and saved out. So, so we can put that in. And the reason we put that in is because we want that to be a separate item with fire attached to it. And I wonder if I can actually show you that one then. Okay, so this is me opening up the Reaper comp, pre-comp. And if I play that back, will it play back? Yeah. It's not playing very high res, obviously, but you can see I've made a fire come out of his mouth and I've got the, the floating chili on fire. Easy peasy. Then we've got the secondary animated bits, the transition elements. Each, each jar has a special thing that happens. So, for example, the Boy Scout, his hat flies off. So, all we did there, pasted that in as a separate flat layer and we hid that within the flame transition. Okay, so here comes the fire, there. As the flame grows from the ground up, boom. Right there, we then added in the cap. And then that's on a layer now in front of the fire. Just add some rotation, some motion blur to it. Make it get larger and larger as if it's coming towards the camera. And as it falls down, in front of the wood now, because it's on the top layer, the next jar is starting to make its way into the shot. And we did that also for the Reaper with his skull. We did it for the stick on the marshmallow for the um, Ghost Stories one. And we did it for the drinks cup with the Grizzly one. They've all got the same sort of transition and it was just those sort of things that help add an extra little bit of humor to this film. Now I can't remember what other elements to talk about. They were the main parts probably you wanted to see. And then things I like to do, which not a lot of people would do probably, to help sell in the impact a bit more, is these little extra elements that I do to help merge the whole film together. And that is some camera shake. And it's very simple what I do and a bit of a glow layer as the fire is happening. Hopefully this is answering a lot of your questions. You can still let me know down below and I'll try and answer them by commenting rather than another video, obviously. Um, we'll be doing much bigger breakdowns in the future uh, when I start thinking about courses or Patreon or something, you know, way in the future. I'm hoping this has given you enough of an insight. So when I play this back, can you see that wobble, bum, 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 bum. I have mentioned this before in a previous tutorial. All we do is keyframe, as you can see here. So what we're on, we're on 100 to scale, and then we go 107, back to 100, 104, back to 100, 101, back to 100, 100.5, back to 100. And that just gives you that shudder. <laughs> I'll do it now in the edit. Boom! See? Effective. This layer here, I'll turn it off and play it. See if you can notice. So, here comes the fire. Boom. With it on. So all I've done is, you can see it on the wood most clearly, a gradient masked red glow that it's strong and then fades as the fire dies down just to kind of help sell it in that it's part of the environment it's interacting with the wood 
Uh, yeah, I think it's a nice little touch. You're welcome. Uh, now, just looking at the rest of the film, I don't think you need to see any of the real life footage stuff. That's very obvious. Yeah, I think we've nailed it. I'm sorry if it's not going to be an exciting video. Like I say, this was supposed to just be me talking to you about the editing with a beer, trying to break it down as best I can with my computer struggling with all these applications open. It's very simple, isn't it? Because all it is, when you break it down, if I was to play it back frame by frame here, so that is our background, yeah? Then we have keyframed the jar to be at 0% behind that wood to 100% there and then the text comes in same keyframing the animation happens his tongue wiggles he does some blinking we got the whole cool sonic boom with nice motion blur from after effects then the jar starts spinning the hat comes flying off the next transition but the great thing about after effects i'll give it that is obviously we can layer up photoshop layers and video layers and then pre-comp it all together. So, as you'll see, I've got this interactive fire element, which from the jar was flat fire. I put in the real fire from the effects pack, so the jar is completely alive. And that is actually animating as the jar is flying in with motion blur. And that's pretty complex, I'd say. Same with these heat intensity things. Real fire on their stick illustrations you know, just alternate the timing a little bit and they look like they're unique each time. You can see the fire in the grizzly one also interacting. It's behind the buildings and the bears. And uh, yeah, it's just these little elements I think that help bring this concept to life. Uh, obviously, I think everyone likes the Reaper the best. That one interacted with real life footage at the end, which is good where the... the, the um, the rain shot knocks the skull towards the camera. Uh, play it back with the, just the sound effects and it's pretty cool because it's like the skull going. All in all, I think the advert came out well. It was a test for myself. Like I don't like After Effects. So this just threw me in the deep end and I'm a firm believer in experimenting while having fun and you will learn a lot that is all i can really show you for this film i hope it answered enough of your questions and i hope to see you on the next one and i hope you don't mind this raw approach i just want to get it out there so i can get on with the more creative stuff for the future films so hopefully you'll stick around for the next one it's already been created i've just got to recreate it now for youtube which will be a nice challenge uh, and client loves this one so i'm looking forward to showing you that that's it for this video hope you like it get your camera out just have fun and i'll see you on the next one